Wow, it's your boy D1, and right now I'm rocking with all hiphop.com. You hear me? Epic interview. Make sure you watch. Well, first of all, this is all hip hop. Yeah. D1, your man Jigsaw, Chuck Creeper. So, you one of my favorite rappers, you know that already. Word, yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, first things first, talk about your new album, Slingshot David. Yeah. So, look, man. To do an album is different from just going in the studio and rapping. So I right. said I have to tell a story on this album, a powerful mm -hmm. story, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if this the last album that I ever do in my whole life, you know, Lord forbid if anything happens, I wanted to make sure people understood something that they could apply to their life. It's called Slingshot David. Right. As we all know, David defeated who back in the old days? Goliath. Mm -hmm. David defeated Goliath using what? A slingshot. Right. The thing is, in life, we all have our own Goliaths. We all have our own giants to try to hold us back from reaching our destiny. You hear me? Poverty, depression, anxiety, racism, discrimination, you hear me? Um, uh, domestic violence. I just got a call five minutes ago. One of my friends in New Orleans, his ex-girlfriend just shot and killed her current boyfriend. Literally, this is real life. This is real time stuff that's happening. That being said, to defeat our Goliaths, we have to figure out what our slingshot is. So the whole album is about my life story from elementary school, me wanting to be a hot boy, on up to middle school, high school, college, and post-college years, and telling you how I became the man I am today, how I found my slingshot, which is hip-hop. Right. Hip-hop, man. I figured out that God gave me this gift of being able to be a dope artist, and now, once you learn how to use your slingshot, then you can defeat your Goliaths. A lot of people, they figure out their slingshot, but they don't use it the right way. And if you use your slingshot the wrong way, you might end up killing your own army with your slingshot. You hear me? You might end up killing yourself with your, with your slingshot. So you got to find your slingshot and figure out how to use it. That's what my album is about. How long did it take you to learn how to use your slingshot properly? Very good question. Um, well, when I first started rapping, I was not using it properly at all. And what it took was, it took for the people who I really don't want to let down in this world to be disappointed in me. You know, I think we should all feel that feeling when somebody who's really counting on us, who loves us, is disappointed. So when my mama, when my grandpa, two of my heroes came up to me and they were embarrassed by the music that I was making, uh, that, stuff, that stuff made me say, I either got to stop rapping or I have to figure out how to use this thing called hip hop, AKA this slingshot for the, the right purpose. You know what I mean? So that's what it was. It just took for some people who I love to be disappointed in me. Okay. And you know, there's a lot of people out here who there's a lot of people they love who are disappointed in them, but they're numb to that behind a green piece of paper. You know what I'm saying? They're like, man, I don't care if everybody is embarrassed. Long as this green piece of paper keep coming in, I'm gonna keep doing whatever. And I'm just not a slave to this, you know what I mean? I'm not a slave to this, bro. I tear this stuff up, like this means nothing to me. Right, it's funny. I wonder how people do that sometimes. I mean, and this goes way back to the earliest days of hip hop, when sometimes, you know, some of these, I mean, you know, it's just straight ball verb hip hop. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Now, some of that we we would listen to and enjoy it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I never could understand how a lot of these artists could do that, knowing that their mom or their dad, even or their, you know what I mean, grandma might be hearing it. Like I never actually ever asked anybody about that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because people separate themselves from their artistry, and they say, "Well, I'm David Augustine Jr. That's just D1. That's not a reflection of me." In hip hop, man, if you're not stepping up and, and accepting ownership of being a hero, then you're a coward in my opinion. You can't separate yourself from your artistry. Hip hop is too, is too ingrained in the streets, man. Hip hop is too from the heart, you know, to act like that's just my music, that's not who I really am, you know? Yeah, that's what, that's what some artists try to do though, man. You can't do that, man. You ain't fooling nobody, man. For real. So how have you, how would you say you've evolved, um, musically evolved? Hmm, the way, the way that I've musically evolved is I'm open to taking risks now um, and, and working with producers that I might not be familiar with. Um, you know, when I first came in the game, I was just like, I want everybody to know that I could spit. That's what it was all about is just spitting. Like, I want y'all to know I got bars and whatnot. Now I realize that the art of putting an album together is you have to have different moods. You have to have plot twists. You have to have, you know, a narrative that's being told throughout the album. You know, I strive to be great. So, in order to be great, you have to do some things that's gonna make you uncomfortable. Um, I'm more vulnerable now than I've ever been in my music. 
on my album, I'm talking about waiting on results from an HIV test. You know what I'm mean? saying? And, and I'm saying how, you know, in that moment, that's when I had a conversation, you know, where I was like, you know, God, like I just, you know, I, I, I want to stop running from the calling that you have on my life. If you get me through this one, I promise you, I promise you, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to do better. You know what I mean? I'm talking about these type of things. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being honest about the fact that I went to college chasing behind a girl, passed up on basketball scholarships, chasing behind a girl just so she could cheat on me with some football players. You know what I mean? That yeah, you know, like, I'm being vulnerable, man. Um, and that's what's connecting with people. Right. So... One song, it's I Like You, that record, mm -hmm. has a very different feel. It's almost, a, it's like a hit record. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's, a, that's like, I would Matt, call that a hit record. Bruh, right? I've been trying to tell people for over a year, big brother, look, I'm like, I like you, we got one. Right. We got one. Man, yeah. that means so much to hit. I thought you were about to say, this is different for D1, and I don't know. Man, that's a hit. No, that's, that's, I like that record. Yeah. It's worldly sounding though. Yeah. 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 Talk so about that. so my album tells a story from elementary school on up. Okay. I Like You is the fourth song on the album, you mm -hmm. hear me? So if you think about it, I Like You took place during my high school years. Right. That's the perfect way to epitomize how I was feeling towards my first love in high school, you know? Right. It was just very simple, innocent love. Mm -hmm. So it's just best encapsulated by saying, I like you. Right. I like you. You know what I'm saying? Like and that's that's why that, that record has that type of feel because it wasn't this deep, I want to marry you, you know what I'm saying? You're what I've been looking for my whole life. It's like, man, I'm in ninth, 10th grade, man. Like, I like you, like, you you dope, you know? So yeah, that's where that song came into play. How was it working with Seven Streeter? How was it working with Seven Streeter? Well, Seven Streeter, it was something that um I didn't, I didn't know what to expect because, you know, you hear the name Seven Streeter and she's really, a big artist, um, very successful. Um, when I met her, I didn't know how cool and down to earth she was, you know. When I got her phone number and whatnot and we started actually communicating, I'm like, oh, she actually hitting me back. Like, she actually texting me back. Like, oh, this is dope. So we actually formed a real friendship, found out we have a lot in common, you feel me? Um, when we hopped on this song together, Love Always Wins, um, she came to the studio in, in, in L.A., Drove across town to get there. We sat there, we vibed in the studio together. And I was just like, yo, this is what a collaboration supposed to feel like. Forget all that email and stuff, you know, and you never get to link with the artist. So, yeah, it was it was dope. And we've been in contact since then. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you still consider yourself a Christian rapper or are you a rapper that's Christian? Oh, I'm whatever people want to call me. You hear me? I think that when people overly worry about that stuff, that just shows that they're insecure. You hear me? Very insecure. Um, um, I'm, I'm one of those people that's like, man, look, what do you need to call me in order to make you listen to my music? Because what's most important to me is that you listen to the music. Mm -hmm. You got some people that's like, if you ain't a Christian rapper, then I'm not gonna listen to it. Cause all I listen to is, you know, music that's for the Lord, baby. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm a Christian rapper, yeah. Right. And you got some people that's like, oh, I don't listen to no Christian rap. I, if you a conscious rapper, or if, you know, if you a lyrical rapper, I listen to that. And I'm like, yep, that's what I am. Yeah, now you listen to it, you know? So whatever, man, the music will speak for itself. Um, I don't know, what would you, you know, I, I'd be curious. What, yeah, what do people consider it based on listening? You know? Well, I mean, initially I think it was a Christian rapper. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like it's, it's evolved. And not just you, I feel like others have evolved as well. Like I was with the Cray at MTV. I was at MTV TRL and I'm like, the Cray pops out. I'm like, oh, shoot, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's doing music that's more broad, if you will. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that pressure at all to do music that's more broad or that reaches more people, more mainstream? I don't feel any pressure, man. Mm -hmm. This thing feel like one big field trip to me, big homie. Like, honestly, I came from being a teacher a few years ago, you know? Mm -hmm. Having a nine to five, having a shirt and a tie on, and, you know, dress pants, church shoes, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, like literally, so for me being a rapper and being able to express myself creatively through art, this is like one big field trip, you know? Yeah. It, it does feel like this industry is, is uh, pervaded with a lot of evil though, you know? That's why I made a song called The Devil's Playground, uh -huh. you know? Where I talk about some of the evils of this industry. Right. I mm -hmm. thought I was gonna get in this thing and just 
have everybody saying like, yo, you got you got a heart for changing the culture. Yeah, we're all for that. It's like, nah, man, I done had people try to say, yo, if you sleep with me, I'll be your manager. Men, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, crazy stuff. I didn't had people who you would think we on the same team, we doing God's work. Really, they on some, you know, competitive, shiesty acting stuff. Like, you know, so I, I didn't see that, but I'm, I'm strong, I'm built for this, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You say, why do the righteous have to suffer so much? Why did you say that? But, and answer that question. Yep. so I was at a time in my life where I'm trying to do everything the right way. I'm one of the only people from my hood who actually said, I'm gonna go to college and try to make something of my life. Um, I have a girlfriend at the time, I'm being faithful to her. Um, I'm handling my business in the, in, in the school with the books as well as on the basketball court. I'm doing all this stuff, you know. I'm going to church. I walk through the hood every Sunday. I walk through the hood just to get to church, you know, by myself. You know, this is something I'm just doing, trying to do the right thing. Meanwhile, it's like all this stuff is happening to me and around me. And I'm like, why am I having to suffer? My best friend getting murdered. My old lady cheating on me. You know what I'm saying? I get cut from the basketball team in college. Like, a lot of my friends end up deserting me, you know? So that's what I, that's what I was feeling at that moment, you know? Why do the righteous suffer? And you said to answer the question. Um, the answer to why the righteous suffer is because no one has ever promised, and I didn't understand this at the time, but no one has ever promised that doing the right thing is going to lead to a life without trials and tribulations and tests. Right. No one has ever promised that. But when you're a little boy, when you're in high school, just starting college, you don't understand this. And you just think that righteousness should come along with an easy path, you know. Mm -hmm. And through me studying the word and through me becoming more spiritually mature, I realized that God often, you know, gives his hardest tests to his strongest soldiers. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I had to embrace that later in life. It's like... Yo, I'm going through stuff. This is an opportunity to get through it. And then I have a more powerful story to tell the next person, yeah. you know, coming behind me. And that's something I've embraced. But at the time, it make you want make you want to drop out of school. It make you want to commit suicide. It make you want to murk something. It make you want to just give up on whatever your dreams are. Uh -huh. you, know what I mean? you have a song called, So You Want to Be a Hot Boy. Yeah. Um, in context to what's going on today in the world with music, an artist, you know, back even when the Hot Boys were out, there was still like a pretty wide range of music that we were able to pick and choose from. Now you're from New Orleans, so obviously they were the ones you saw and, and chose. What do you think about the influence and the impact that uh, hip hop artists are having now on the youth specifically? Hip hop artists are more powerful than parents, pastors, Barbers, coaches, teachers, hip hop artists are more powerful than all of that stuff. Uh -huh. And when I realized that, it made me want to get into the game and be part of the solution and be a uh -huh. hip hop artist who could actually have a positive effect on the culture. Uh -huh. I know the reason why I say parents is because unfortunately a lot of parents just send their, their kids off to school basically like, yeah, get them out of my hair. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like I get to really live life now while y'all off at school. Mm -hmm. And that's messed up. Everybody's running from accountability. Mm -hmm. Everybody's running from responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know? Even hip hop artists for the most part. You know? So I don't really get mad at the at the at the little 17, 18, 19 year old hip hop artists who come in the game. They're still trying to figure life out. Yeah. So the messaging in the music, you would expect that from from a, a teenager. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when you 30 years old, when you 40, 40 years old, Boy, you still rapping about that foolishness? You know what I'm saying? You still talking like you out here, you know, smashing people, baby mama, and selling mm -hmm. all this dope on the block. And come on, bro. Like, that story is old. I don't rock with that, bro. Right, right. You know, you, you like, you, 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 you're a coward in a lot of ways because you refuse to grow and mature and evolve. And that's what life is about, you know? Okay. Now, a few um, months ago, I don't know. Year ago. Yeah, I think it was a year ago now. You and I met up at a church and mm -hmm. we spoke to kids and uh, a congregation about financial literacy. Hey. Hey. And then this year, Jay Z pops up <laughs> and starts doing the same thing and getting all the credit. Right. You have um, almost made this your cause because you did the, the record about Sally Mae. Yeah. And now, it's kind of hot. Yeah. 
how do you feel in retrospect? Right. You were ahead of the game. Yeah. And others too, like Boyce Watkins and, and yeah. even Doc uh, Pastor Sorries and yep. you know. Yep. Um for Jay Z getting all the credit, man. I, you know, I feel a way about that. You feel a way about <laughs> that? Yeah. Yeah. This 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 how I feel. Um if you truly if you truly are doing this not just to get credit, but if you're doing this to make sure that the message gets out there, right. then you won't trip on who gets the credit a lot of times, you know what I mean? Because I know I want credit. you want credit. <laughs> it's the thing. It's the thing. Yo, that song has changed my life. Yeah. That song has changed my life. Because of the Sally Maybach song, now I'm I am the hip hop artist that literally has been thrust to the forefront of a conversation about student loan debt. You know, yeah. Jay Z talking about buying neighborhoods. I ain't finna buy no neighborhoods in New York. You know, so that's a different level of financial literacy that he's talking about, yeah. and I respect him for that. Yeah. If you recall, my brother, I made a song called J Fifty and Weezy, Absolutely. where I was actually challenging those three brothers to be more accountable for the messaging in their music. I'm proud of Jay Z, so double salute to Jay Z yeah. for 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 stepping up with the Four 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 album. Mm-hmm. Um. The Sally Maybach song has led to me going all around the country speaking about financial literacy to these students and, you know, giving away almost $200,000 in college scholarships. You hear me? Right. Like, that's a blessing. I Look up the D1 Knowledge for College Tour. You know, this is me and Sally May. We've actually partnered up to where we're getting financial literacy out there to all of these urban and even suburban communities, you know? Okay. That's love, man. I would have never thought getting into the rap game that I will become an advocate and such a public speaker, you know, for mm-hmm. for a cause like financial literacy. And I'm being myself. I really took part of my advance from signing my deal mm-hmm. and paying my student loans off. Mm-hmm. I never heard a rapper talk about that when I was growing up, you know? Yeah. I really still drive a 1998 Honda Accord, you hear mm-hmm. me? Like in real life, not because I have to. You know, I could buy something way better than that. But mm-hmm. I love not having a car note, you know? Right. That's my other song called No Car Note. How many people can relate to that? And they're like, yes. Like, I love not having a car note, you yeah. know? So, okay. yeah, you can relate to that. Yeah, yeah bro. It's, it's, it's real life. So, I've been a trailblazer since the time I stepped in. It's like, Absolutely. if Nas was a hot boy, that would pretty much be D1. That's right. how I feel, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I got the hot boy all limit. Like, that's all I grew up on. But, you know, I, I'm like that that hood poet, that, that, that person that's philosophical that's sophisticated like a Nas so you know I'm not I'm not following anyone else's blueprint okay so you mentioned you mentioned it so J50 or was it J Weezy J50 J50 Weezy. and Weezy what that was the splashdown song for you it hit like a meteorite yeah um I wasn't going to mention it but let's talk about it in hindsight how do you feel about that song now yeah, I feel like only one of those three artists has stepped up to the plate, and that's Jay-Z. What Jay-Z is doing, man, you got a double salute to Jay-Z as well. He's he's putting other people on. He Jay-Z has given us J. Cole, you hear me? Like, like think about, you know, the, the, the philanthropist that Jay-Z has become. Uh, it's awesome. Um, 50 Cent. <laughs> we well, ain't seen no evolution, Phil. You hear me? <laughs> like, none. Yeah. Musically, yeah. none. You know what I mean? Lil Wayne, we ain't seen no evolution, Weezy. You hear me? Musically, none. The only thing getting bigger is your age. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I feel like um, I don't want those brothers to think that. Well, sometimes you have to be critical, and you have to be like, "Hey, man, I'm I'm being critical out of love." Yeah. That's the key. I am being critical of Fifty Cent and Lil Wayne, but it's out of love. Mm-hmm. It's just like, man, I really wish I could sit down and talk to one of them brothers one on one, just on some bro. Think about it. Life is temporary. You're not going to be here one day. God gave you the talent that you have. You know you didn't give yourself that talent. It's natural. You're naturally a businessman. Naturally an awesome lyricist, charismatic. God gave you that talent. You should be using that talent in a way that glorifies God, you know? And you're lying about a lot of the stuff that you rap about. That's the other thing, you know? I hope that don't offend you, but we know it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, it just did all that. Yeah. What artists, and I don't know if you would care to comment on this, but I'm, I've been a little bit going back and forth on social media about Meek Mill, and that's the same thing. Out of love, mm-hmm. I want you to do better. Mm. I want better for you. Mm-hmm. Now I know we're in jail. I know he's in jail, and I know there's these mass protests. But at the same time, something has to be said about doing better. Right. 
as a man, as a representative of our culture, mm -hmm. and just as a, as a black, a young black male, mm -hmm. who that I feel knows better. Because Meek raps about the system. Right. He raps about what he's entrapped in right now. So right. he's not some clown right. who just doesn't know mm -hmm. what's what he's up against. Right, and and you feel like musically, content wise, that he should do better. Well, no, no. I mean, what you mean? You know, you know what? No, no, no. Okay, let me be clear. His music mostly does not represent. A, what, you know, he's not a, he's not Chuck D. He's right, not right, right, even Jay Z. You know, what I mean, he's Meek mm -hmm. Mill. But every now and then, he will sprinkle people with a message mm -hmm. about the system. Mm -hmm. You know, about his people. He has very emotive. Music, of course, right? But he also has that other side too. So yeah. he does have a balance. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is, his plight right now, even though there's a big, larger picture, to, in context, I feel like I, I would expect more from Meek Mill at the age of thirty. Right. If that makes any sense. Yeah, to me. I listened to the last album, Wins and Losses, and I saw a shift um, for the better. Honestly, in my opinion, I was like, yo, Meek has been through some trials and tribulations. Some of those Goliaths in life has started to get the best of him, a.k.a. some losses, you know what I mean? But I think he identified how powerful hip-hop is and that, and, and, and that that could be used as his slingshot. So he started to put messaging out there in specifically the Wins and Losses album that's like, wow, like you sprinkling game out here for these little dudes coming up. Because all my little homies in New Orleans, they love Meek. You know, they love Meek. It's almost like when Meek says it, that's the owner's manual to how to be a dude from the hood that's coming up and trying to represent your hood, represent your set, and make it out. So I think Meek has started to take ownership of that. Um, it's, it's crazy that a lot of times, man, growing up, who did we have to look up to? You know what I'm saying? Like, who, who, did, who did a Meek Mill have to look up to, um, you know, in, in, terms of, in terms of like a, who's he signed to? Rick, Rick Nation. Rick Ross, where he signed, you know, a, signed Ross. MMG, yeah. you know, a uh, Rick Ross. Like, ultimately, man, there's a lot of people in this game who we call real to where it's like, real? By whose standard? You know, like, you're not really real when it boils down to it. You know, it's not real just because you're like, man, I don't snitch. I'm not a snitch, so that make me real. I'm real because I sold this much dope in the streets and I never went to jail. Partner, that don't make you real where I'm from, you hear me? Like, you, your definition of real is fake, <laughs> you hear me? So, that's the issue, that I come into the game with a different perspective on what real is. And and now it's just a matter of showing these brothers. And, and a lot of them, they see it, they see it. But once again, man, you know, they're slaves to this, to this green piece of paper. At the end of the day, brother, this is, this is you know, what's this is? Five dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Look. When I tear this bread up, you know, guess what? I'm the same person that I was five seconds ago before I tore this up. You know what I'm saying? It's just a green piece That's, of paper. You could have gave me that. I could have gave you that. <laughs> you right. I mean, bro, like it's just, it's just, it's just a green piece of paper, man. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hurting. You know what I mean? A lot of these dudes are not hurting, but it's like you still making it seem like it's all about a dollar. Yeah. You know, and and it shouldn't be, man. No, it no, should. Okay. It should be all about a higher power. You know? Yeah. But I will say this: in people's defense, a lot of cats are out here trying to change their lifestyle, their life, and their family's life. Is that ever justified? To, to is does the ends justify the means? When when we're doing this type of hip hop, this you know, for lack of a better term, ratchet hip hop. Cause watch this. If your goal is to change your family's life, let's just say you got 10 people in your family that you're trying to really take care of. If you got to put out music that's going to cause 10 people to get killed in order to save 10 people's life, you back neutral. You back, you didn't really do any good in the world. You, you, you contributed to the killing of 10 people, you know what I'm saying? And then you also contributed to, well, financially, I put 10 people, you know, up or put them on, you know? The music, the music is powerful, man. We can't escape that stuff. Like, the messaging in the music is everything. You can't not be held accountable for these words, bro. Like, Tupac got killed 21 years ago. People still riding around in Times Square bumping Tupac to this day. Come on, man, our music is gonna outlive us. So stop acting like the music doesn't matter and it's just all about the money you can make from the music. Kill it.
like you're not smiling on the album cover. Your your smile is notorious. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's because this album is all about a fight. You know, yeah. David and Goliath. That was a fight. You know, um, I don't smile when I'm fighting. You know, I've been in I've been in many fights in my life. Some spiritual, some physical, some mental. And ain't no smiles in the midst of a fight. You know. Uh, and that's what I want people to know and understand. Like you smile when you emerge victorious. Um, my last my last project that I put out is called Threes Up. Um, I'm smiling on the album cover. You know why? Cause I've been battling serious depression. You know, serious issues mentally to where I was contemplating suicide and just not happy. You know, existing in this in this in this music industry, not feeling you know content with my place. And when I overcame that, you know, I had to go to therapy. I had to spiritually get refocused. Once I defeated that demon, you know, I was like, man, I got a smile on this album cover because I just won a big fight, you know. Right now, I'm in the midst of a fight. You feel me? I'm in the midst of a fight because I know that the enemy, you know, the enemy hates that I got away. You hear me? The enemy hates that like a dude like D1 with all this charisma, all this talent that I got away and I'm not doing his work. So therefore, I'm getting tested, big brother. I'm getting tested. I just had massive surgery like a month ago, uh, you know, for this rare disease that I have, this condition called achalasia. So I had to have, uh, you know, a big surgery. The second time I had to have surgery on that. One of my students, one of my favorite students, I'm FaceTiming him. He was a big rapper named G Money from Baton Rouge. FaceTiming him, he was like, man, you know, I, I need your help. I'm going through it, you know, got a lot of stuff going on. He gets killed two days later. The day before, we were supposed to link up and really just chop it up and me kind of speak life into him and help him out you know that stuff messed me up because i was like dang i was too busy to take time to link with him i had a show in memphis and i told him i'm gonna link with you on monday some people don't have till monday he got killed on sunday you know i'm in the midst of a fight right now you know i got i got people around me i got internal uh music industry issues things that's going on man to where it's not all peaches and cream so that's why this album is so timely slingshot did um, oh, you once proclaimed that you were holding out sex for marriage. Is mm. that still the case? Yeah, yeah. Like, you can't, you can't say you're a child of God and you want God to bless you with 100% of the things you want, but... You only want to give him 60% of you. You only want to add here to 60% of the things he wants you to do. You feel me? So it's like, God, like, my, like you my standard, you know, and, and you perfect. I'll never be perfect. So in terms of me messing up or me falling short, of course, like, I'm human just like anybody else. And I pray for forgiveness and I do my best and I try to put myself in the right energy and the right situations, you know what I'm saying? But, of course, that's the goal, man. That stuff is hard. That's probably, I don't struggle with, uh, I don't struggle with drinking. I don't struggle with smoking. I don't struggle with gambling. Um, I don't struggle with, you know, a lot of things that people struggle with. But, you know, in that area, you know, sexual purity, oh, yeah, that's one of my Goliaths, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, I got to be real, like, focused in that area because now it's tough, you know, and I've messed up. I, I've definitely made mistakes, and then I'm like, dang, I'm not getting content with these mistakes, I'm trying, I gotta get back focused, you know? You, uh, got your eyes on anybody? You know what I'm saying? In the industry, you know, got the industry, in the industry out there? In the industry. Or outside the industry. But right, you know. so in the industry, um, you know, at one time I did, but out of respect for that person's uh, relationship, you know, that person is in a serious relationship, so, you know, that's off limits, you know, I ain't mm -hmm. trying to take you if, you if you're with somebody, but I did at one time. Um, I couldn't see myself being with somebody in the in the industry, man. Like, you know, like your schedule and my schedule put together, how are we gonna do that? Like, I need to I need to know that when I finally finish all this grinding I'm doing, and when I come home, that you're gonna be there. Not that you're gonna be out on tour, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, I'm all by myself. So, you know, but I got my eye, I got my eye open. Uh, if you if you see anybody, let me know. You heard me. You got my cell phone on. Okay. Text me. Let me know. Cause I need to get married, man. I feel you. I need to know. Yeah, I don't think you feel me. I need to get married for real, bro. Like I'm I'm serious, bro. I'm over here tweaking. I'm like, yeah. Look, I I I I'll be honest. I said it. I said um, I want to get married. I need to get married. You know what I mean? Like that stuff will really that'll be awesome. Like I said, bro. I'm 
I'm over here tweaking, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, man, look. Because just having that life partner, having that mm-hmm. best friend, having that person that you attracted to, but you can also just talk to about anything, like, that would be wonderful, you feel me? So, um, it's tough, too. I be all the way real. It's tough when you have a lot of options, you know? Sometimes options can can be can be a, 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 a curse because it's like, oh, shoot, like, there's a bunch of awesome people in this world, you know what I mean? So... Um, so just, you know, help me out, man. I know, I know you got all the answers. Yeah. I don't know. I need help myself. Yeah. <laughs> let's go to counseling, man. Right. Let's do something. Yeah. Let's, let's do something. Yeah. Do you, if you, if you could, can you name the top five Goliaths facing the black community? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, um, uh, financial slavery. That is a Goliath. We are. We are slaves to poverty. We are slaves to an impoverished mindset as well, to where we don't even know how to save or how to accumulate wealth uh, at all. You know, we don't know how to pool our resources and our money together. So financial slavery, that's one. Number two, um, a lack of respect for life, for human life. I had an Uber driver from Africa last week. He was bringing me to Brooklyn and he was just like, I went to Ghana. Me going to Ghana changed my entire life. This brother, he's from Ghana. He was telling me that over there, the big difference is human life is sacred. So the thought of you're going to just kill somebody? No, indeed. That is just totally like not even in the realm of possibility. Here, man, somebody get off for $2,500. That's light work. You know what I mean? Just go take care of that for me. Like, And it's crazy that we don't value human life. In the black community, too. When we going to stop? When we going to own up to the fact that, yeah, we killing ourselves. We are, you know, we're not the only people killing us, but we are killing us. You hear me? So that's number two. Number three, when it comes to parenting, yo, so many parents run from the responsibility to where ultimately you can't blame the school your kids go to or just the music they listen to. Your kids are your responsibility. So don't just throw them off on someone. And I've spoken with you about parenting and how I double salute any great parents nowadays social media shouldn't be raising your kids but in the black community people will die for some likes some comments and some followers but they'll do anything they will do anything for that you know so that's number three is definitely lack of good parenting number four i think that you know we use the word god often we use the word god if you're a black person it's expected that you believe in god yeah that's just kind of come with the territory but guess what? How many of us are really thinking about the fact that if we say we believe in God, we should be conscious of what does God want us doing with our gifts and our talents? We got all this black girl, black boy magic, you know what I'm saying? But what are we using it for? You know, if we're not using it in a way that's glorifying God, the God that we believe in so much, you know, we're wasting our talents. We are misusing our slingshots, you hear me? Don't get on stage and you just won an award for, you know, a song about popping pills and Percocets and selling dope and <laughs> murking people. And, hey, I want to thank God. Boy, you better put your hand down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real. And then, so that's the fourth thing is, you know, um, we need to truly submit to, to our Heavenly Father. And number five, um, I just think we're not listening to enough D1. You know what I'm saying? I just really, I just, just I just, to do that. that's a problem in the black community. You know what I mean? Like, 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 <coughs> we need to fix that. Because if we was listening to more D1, Trust me, ACT and SAT scores would rise, you know what I mean? Like, people would be out here respecting one another, truly loving one another, and we'd all have something to bounce to, you know what I mean? Just be entertained. Like, man, the world would be a, just a better place. Okay, okay. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, last, well, second to last question. Um, I know you may be tired of the Christian rap thing, but I gotta admit, I feel I could be out of step with it, um, but I don't. I don't feel the commitment. I don't. How can I say this? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like everybody wants to go broad, mainstream with it, and we lose into what we really call Christian rap. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for all the people that started out as Christian rappers from day one, who now don't want to be considered Christian rappers anymore. You know, I think that's kind of lame. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think that's kind of, I think that's 
I think that is a, a, a big sign of like insecurity. You know, mm-hmm. like you can't micromanage something that God gave you. You know, especially when you've used you know the Christian rap community to make your name and to elevate you. You know, like now you got this built this big built-in audience, and now it's like, well, I think I hit the ceiling over here, so I just want to move over. You know, I, I don't I don't feel that, man. I don't feel that, and I think that. Um, everyone has their own motives, their own intentions, and at the end of the day, hey, partner, you gotta answer to God. You don't have to answer to D1. So that's that's between y'all. But me personally, yeah, from the outside looking in, cause I didn't start. Man, it my 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 life would be totally different if I started out as a Christian rapper. You know, I started out my first tour was with Young Dro, Killer Mike, and Pac Div. You hear me? Straight up working with Grand Hustle, then with Macklemore. Then, you know, working with Jason Jeter and all that, like opening up for Lil Wayne and Drake at concerts. You feel me? And all of a sudden, Christians started to say, wait, hold on. But dude doesn't curse in any of his music and we can hear, you know, he just seems like he a man of God. Like, holy, he got this song. Like, and all of a sudden I started to be more embraced by the Christian rap community. But it's not like I started out as like, yo, I'm a Christian rapper for all this time. And now all of a sudden I want to change that. Because if that was the case, you know, then maybe I would be able to, like, justify why people are trying to do that all of a sudden. But, you know, man, you chasing, you chasing the fame or the popularity or even the, the platform, you know, that comes along with not being a Christian rapper. What I learned is you should pray for whatever platform God wants you to have. You shouldn't have to alter your personality or your image just to say, well, I can reach a broader audience now, you know. I don't... I don't know, that's just too calculated. Like, like all this stuff shouldn't be calculated, man. Like, you need to be you. You need to be you. And, and yeah, like, that's... Bro, the people in the church need to be fed, too. So what about for the people in the church that's like, yo, like, we need y'all. We need some people that, that's been feeding us the whole time. All of a sudden, now, you're saying, oh, you don't want... You don't want to be associated, you know, with us anymore. Or, or you don't want to explicitly be associated with us. Now you don't. But you did for a long time, you know, when we were helping to build you up and to and to make you huge. You feel me? You wouldn't have gotten as big as you got. You wouldn't have. Period. You wouldn't have gotten as big as you got. So then, so you talk about first week sales. Ninety five percent of those sales is coming from white Christian kids. Yeah. You heard me? White Christians. So, so it's kind of like, oh yeah, I still want to benefit from getting you know all these sales from y'all and and doing this, but I do. Over time, when I feel like I have enough of a stronghold on this community, now I want to branch off and do more, you know? Right. And that's, that's, I'm like, oh, that's, mm-hmm. like, did God put that on your heart? Or was this a strategic, you know, branding mm-hmm. move of like, hey, we could get in the game like this, you know what I'm saying? Because if that's the case, yeah. if it was like that for me, Chuck, I wouldn't have came in the game trying to get with YMCMB and Grand Hustle and whatnot, I would have I would have said, man, let me do every church in the state of Louisiana. Let me get that on lock. You know what I'm saying? Let me just do straight Christian uh, music, get them to love me, get super big, and then start to try to cross over. But for me, it wasn't a calculated business decision. It was like, I might not live till to, to put another project out. So let me do the music that's really on my heart right now. If that's to do explicitly Christian music, I'll do that. But if that's to do J50 and Wheezy and the one that got away featuring Manny Fresh and One Man Army and some of my earlier big hit songs, then that's what I'm going to do. You feel me? Like, I just, I look at time differently than other people, man. Like, I don't have time to have this five and ten year, you know, strategic plan mapped out of, well, I'm going to do this, then I'm going to get big here, then I'm going to start making this type of music. It's like, no, like, I got to do me from today, you know? Okay. Look who just popped up on my time. Lecrae. Word. <laughs> right. Anyway. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. Um, all right, uh, where can people find you, the album, you know, all those details and stuff? You can find me online um, on social media at D1 Music, D-E-E, the number one music. Follow my Instagram, my Facebook, and my Twitter. And um, the album, the album, you know, I'm signed to a label and everything now, but I'm still I'm still thugging it with the flyers. Everybody I see, I'm running up on them like, yo, my album just dropped. It's called Slingshot David. It's definitely available on Spotify, Apple Music. You can purchase it on iTunes, Tidal. Amazon Music, Google Play, all that. And if you want physical copies, you can get them from missionvisionlifestyle.com. You hear me? That's it. 
That's what it is. This is a must listen. If you a hip hop fan, this is a must listen. For real, for real. Look, my president ain't my priest. My governor ain't my god. My mayor ain't my master. I gotta bring it hard. East side, night ward, New Orleans what I claim. Everybody want the platform, nobody want the pain. Man, I came in this game and I paid my dues. Million dollar hustler, I'm making major moves. I'm Tupac, MLK, and Detroit Red. But all the girls say I look like Chris Brown with dread. Ha! <laughs> Everybody got a gift and a passion. Rapping is my gift, so you could call this gift rapping. I Switch fast and elevate without warning. You can't stop this heat. My verse is like global warming. Plus the boy charming. Plus the boy intelligent. All I want to do is be real righteous and relevant. I ain't at the top, but I'm climbing up the ladder. So I work like a slave, but I serve the right master. Faster. Been on my grizzly, but learning patience. Gather wisdom by reading Corinthians, Galatians. Natural disasters plaguing all the nations. These the times they was talking about in Revelations. Huh. Man, the devil try to use me like a fool. Have me speaking evil and be thinking that is cool. Ooh, no, that ain't what I'm here to do. Man, I'm three minus four plus two. The one, hotter than the sun. My album just dropped. I'm feeling like a big dog having fun. And don't think I'm broke, Wody, because I make money. But don't think I love it, Wody, because I hate money. Uh, couldn't afford Jordans growing up on my block. Now instead of Nike shoes, I buy Nike stock. Yeah, I stack my paper, I invested. Too bad we've been psychologically molested. <laughs>